Well, I'm privileged to be back in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where I was raised and uh, was a attendee of the public schools. And to be back here now uh, and be a part and privileged to serve as the chairman of the board of the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Movement, I just want to encourage the superintendent of schools and all of the educators in Northwest Arkansas, particularly Fayetteville, to adopt this program and put it into all of our schools. I think it's the answer in regards to social emotional learning and emotional intelligence that is going to be the game changer in regards to how our young men and women uh, grow up and assimilate into society and change the world in regards to behavior of learning to love and respect one another. I think Fayetteville is the community as it was when I was growing up here, the community and the model to emulate because of our position that we took as a, when I was here as a youth uh, on race. And I hope that by choosing the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Movement to be incorporated into all our schools, uh, it just takes it that much further in regards to separating Fayetteville Public Schools uh, from the rest of the country in regards to what it means for our students. So I wish all of you would embrace it and bring it to uh, the youth for the future of our country. The Jesse Lewis Choose Love Movement is part of the solution. Educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all from Aristotle, ancient wisdom. Between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space lies our freedom and power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Viktor Frankl, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning, he was a psychiatrist who was put in the concentration camps in Germany with his entire family, lost his entire family, obviously stripped of everything. Victor was left to observe the prisoners and their actions and reactions during this most arduous time. And he came up with this, and he understood that if people responded the right way, they'd live longer and happier. And that's really the basis for choose love. We can choose love instead of fear. Some of the issues we face, I don't even really need to go over these, but violence obviously is increasing. After Sandy Hook, there have been 239 school shootings. Actually, that's higher now because this was several months ago. 49.5% of our youth will have a diagnosable mental illness at some time before they are 18. That's the Child Mind Institute. The majority of that is anxiety. And anxiety, of course, leads to violence. It leads to drug abuse, substance abuse, self-destruction, and many, many, of the, many more of the symptoms we see in society of this. Trauma in our schools increased from one in five students 20 years ago to over 50% now, students coming to school traumatized. Of course, that can be from something as, as small as their parents screaming and yelling at their children to, you know, who knows what. But if we reach our kids early enough, all the studies say we can overcome the trauma the children have in, have suffered in their lives. So we give them, we increase their odds of living a successful, happy, normal life substantially if we can reach them as early as pre-K or even before. Reported bullying has increased since we started tracking it. So putting our attention on bullying, which we've done, hasn't really helped. There are more suicides in the U.S. than murders, and we know about substance abuse. And all this despite our best efforts. The government has spent over the course of time billions of dollars treating drugs. And again, it's a case we have blamed the Mexicans and the Colombians, et cetera, et cetera, on our drug use. We've blamed the drug dealers, but no one's ever said, wait a minute, it's the kids that are taking drugs. It's not these guys. If we put it where it belongs, then we would take the responsibility to treat our kids so that they saw the world in such a way they would choose not to self-destruct. That's the idea of this curriculum. Who's going to fix all this? Well, it hadn't been fixed before, so it's going to be us. It's going to be a grassroots effort to teach kids about social and emotional learning, 
and teach them how to connect and choose love with one another. It changes a school community. I've been there and I've seen it in countless, well, not countless, but many, many schools. Our reaction, as I said in the last one, is part of the problem. So if I blame the Mexicans on our drug problem, I have taken my eye off the real issue. If I blame my friend for making me angry, I've taken the responsibility for my reaction from me and given it to him. This is a major misperception. This puts us in a position of being a victim. And many, many children go through their lives as victims, victims of their boss, of the president, of their parents, of the school, whatever it might be. They look at another person as causing their pain. It takes their eye off what's really happening. This is a critical point, a critical misperception. Todd Shields, who many of you know, is the dean of the Fulbright College. We talked to him as long as four, four years ago. And Todd said, our worst problem here is that we get kids with the IQ, but they don't have the emotional intelligence to get through school. In this last sentence, he said, this generation in particular is faced with more challenges and stressful experiences than any generation before. If we want to ensure the success of our future leaders, we must take emotional intelligence seriously and begin teaching students the skills they need at an early age. We're sending kids to Todd that can't get through school in spite of the fact they're equipped mentally, at least IQ mentally. Suzanne Knowles, a lady who runs the guidance and counseling department at the Arkansas Department of Education, has been a wonderful advocate of the Choose Love program, and I won't read all this, but you could stop the video and read it if you want to. Uh, the Jesse Lewis Choose Love movement is a comprehensive program which is free to all who choose to use it. It's a super program, and I hope you'll support it. She's been a big, a big proponent of schools using this program. Top companies, including Google, most of the companies around here, if not all, now rate emotional intelligence higher than IQ at determining the future success of an employee. This is critical. We're not preparing our kids if we don't prepare them with emotional intelligence to succeed in life. Social and emotional learning can break the cycle of dysfunctional generational dysfunction. If a drug addicted family has kids, they're more than likely to do it again and again and again. We have to stop this. We have to re-educate the kids that there's a better way to see life. There's a better way to live than self-destruct. What is social and emotional learning? Castle, the Collaborative for Social and Emotional Learning in Washington, D.C., set the standards for social and emotional learning many years ago. And the standards are, which are within the Jesse Lewis Choose Love program, social awareness, relationship skills, responsible decision-making, self-awareness, and self-management. The schools have always felt, in my understanding anyway, that the parents taught kids emotional intelligence or that the church taught kids emotional intelligence. In reality, emotional intelligence is not innate. So you won't find too many parents that would, one could call highly emotionally intelligent. I was far from it. Scarlett was visiting the Hot Springs School Counselors Convention last summer. And the FBI Director of drug, drug, excuse me, drug Enforcement stood up and talked about how serious the drug problem is. And he, he said, she, she said, they, he frankly depressed them. Then the second member of his team stood up and he said, the opposite of addiction is connection, and connection is love. And what the Jesse Lewis Choose Love curriculum is about is about connecting with kids. It's about having a different climate in the schools of connection and not separation. Long-term studies of social emotional learning show increased health, phys well-being physically, mentally, and emotionally. Reduced substance abuse, reduced mental illness, less incarceration, less violence and anger, and less divorce rates. Even all this is common sense. I mean, it's, it would not it would be not be hard to understand those results. 
SEL is a money maker. It's a windfall to the government. For every $1 invested, there's an $11 net present value return to the community. This was a study done by Columbia University in 2015. So the government really should be funding social and emotional learning, but at this point, they're not. So we have people who have the vision that this can change our country, can change the world, willing to fund these programs. Daniel Goldman wrote the book called Emotional Intelligence, which was a bestseller in 1995. Basically goes over all the research done on teaching kids social and emotional learning over the course of 30, 30 odd years or 40 years. It's been updated now, but you cannot read this book without walking away and saying every child deserves to be taught social and emotional learning beginning in the earliest grades. It simply makes common sense. It creates a happier, more well-balanced child, more, many more times more likely to be a successful, positive person to society. If you have any doubts about it, pick this book up. It's not an easy read, but it's substantial. Our, our chairman, General Marty Steele, who also was a 1964 graduate of Fayetteville High School, I asked Marty, I said, you have to read this book. And so he read it, it took him a month or so, and it is not an easy read. And he called me back, he said, you know, I, David, I don't understand something. I said, what's that, Marty? He said, well, this was written in 1995, and it's now 2017, and this is not in every school, and it's not. It's not that well spread. It's had some political issues, etc., but it should be. Anyway, if you have any doubts, a wonderful resource. A study linking kindergarten, being taught SEL in kindergarten to adult success. This is a 800 kids over 20 years. For every one point increase in the child's social competency score in kindergarten, they were twice as likely to obtain a college degree and 46% more likely to have a full-time job by age 25. I mean, I can't even believe the numbers myself, but it is a study published by the American Journal of Public Health in 2016. When Scarlett came back to her little farmhouse in Sandy Hook, she had a blackboard in the kitchen. This was about two weeks after Jesse's death and she'd come back to get his clothes to bury him in. And she found <clears throat> on the blackboard these words, nurturing, healing, love. As a message, as a message, Jesse somehow left her, left the world, nurturing, healing love. That inspired her, nurturing, healing love will heal the world. That was part of, certainly, the impetus for the Jesse Lewis Choose Love curriculum. What is the Jesse Lewis Choose Love curriculum? It was written by educators for educators. It took the most a good part of two years to put it together with literally many, many, many educators and experts in different parts of the teaching spectrum from preschool to high school. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. Every teacher I've talked to said we benefit from our increased emotional intelligence. We learn alongside the kids. It really does create teachers with a better attitude. It's aligned with the common core ASA mindsets, behavior standards for school counselors, and of course, Castle's core social and emotional learning components. It enhances the classroom and school climate and is a large factor in children's future success. Many schools have said this has changed the climate in our school. I've been in a number of schools and I've witnessed that. In a little over two years, <clears throat> it's been downloaded in 50 states, <clears throat> excuse me, in 55 countries. This is a classroom in Malawi, believe it or not. The program has been downloaded 8,000 times, probably reaching close to 500,000 kids. It's been downloaded close to 800 times in the state of Arkansas. And it's used by all, almost all, if not all, the Springdale Elementary Schools and roughly 150 other schools in the state of Arkansas. 
It's also being being monitored by the University of Arkansas. Several professors love this program, and they're helping in the research in of making sure that the rewards are getting the rewards of the program or what, what's expected. I'm sure they'd be happy to work with the Fayetteville Public School District to help you analyze the results of the program. We do have results and they're pretty spectacular. It's from our own internal questionnaires, but 100% said they have seen, have seen an improvement in classroom climate and in students' overall behavior. We're all connected, and connection is love. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. The Dalai Lama, in The Heart of Happiness, The Art of Happiness, which I believe he wrote with Desmond Tutu. It's an excellent book. The secret to happiness, positive relationships, or connection. Happiness is love. Our good relationships keep us happier and healthier. Doing good for others, doing good for me, physically, mentally, and emotionally. This is a 75-year study by Harvard University. This is what the Jesse Lewis Choose Love curriculum is about. A happier, more peaceful student. More able to deal with problems in his life. With hurdles in his life, of which we all, of course, experience. What we know, all humans need connections. Connection. We want to belong as opposed to fitting in. We need to learn resilience to overcome obstacles. We want to feel good. Scarlett gets in front of a classroom of second graders and says, how does anger feel? And they go, oh. Then she'll say, how does love feel? And they all reach out to hug their neighbor. You know, they get it better. <laughs> better than adults do. It's, it's really quite amazing. So we're back to Viktor Frankl again. We can't always choose what happens to us. He didn't choose to be in the concentration camp. My daughter didn't choose to have her son killed in the first grade. But we always can choose how we respond. We have to be pretty mindful of it. And it's not easy because we're wired to be angry and resentful. But we can always choose love. And that is by and far, in a way, the best choice for us. Scarlett had the choice of choosing love or choosing anger and revenge. The latter would have sent her in a bad place. And she was smart enough to know that. She did it for her own good. The neuroscience of choosing love, we have this brain diagram where we show kids how the stimulus comes into the amygdala and how they have the opportunity to direct their energy to the prefrontal cortex, which can make some sense out of this, or down to the lizard brain, which is simply a reactionary part of our brain. They get this. They understand this. It shows them how, how this works in a, very, in a simplistic way. There are four components to the formula to choose love. There's courage. There's gratitude. There's forgiveness and there's compassion for others. The definition of courage is the willingness and ability to walk through obstacles despite feeling embarrassment, fear, reluctance, or uncertainty. All of these components are practiced. They're not just talked about. They're practiced. It puts them in the brain. It actually rewires the brain to think and act in these ways, to act in courage. The benefits of courage are well studied. I'm not going to read over these, but uh, courage, all of these been, all of these practices have been studied over time by lots of folks. Gratitude, which probably all of you have heard about the, 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 the great benefits of practicing gratitude. Gratitude is mindful thankfulness, the ability to be thankful even when things in life are challenging. When you practice gratitude, you feel thankful and want to share that feeling with others. For a child, you may be thinking about what you don't have. Gratitude will bring you back to appreciating what you do have. It's simply a change in perception, an important one. The benefits of gratitude are numerous. In daily life, we must see that it's not happiness that makes us grateful, but gratefulness that makes us happy. Again, 
common sense. Forgiveness, powerful. Forgiveness means choosing to let go of anger and resentment toward yourself or someone else, to surrender thoughts of revenge and to move forward with your personal power intact. We teach kids the dynamics of bullying. The bully is, in fact, carrying anger that he wants to project onto someone else. His, his target can be somebody who may take that anger in a very personal way, but if you explain to him then in reality, that anger is a distortion. The person who's on the other side of it won't give power to that anger near as much as before. We've, each, we've actually had kids who a bully tries to bully him, and they ask them what they can do to help them. They have compassion for the bully because the bully is hurting them. Forgiveness equals resilience. The benefits of forgiveness, again, are extensive. This changes a child the way a child perceives the world. It's very important. We've talked about forgiveness all of our lives, but have we practiced it? It's a practice that changes the brain. It's not just the thing I think of forgiveness once a week or once a month. It's that I practice it every time I become aware that I'm angry. I practice forgiveness. It's a powerful practice for a child, powerful practice for an adult. Compassion and action is the last of the components of the choose love formula. Compassion and action is the understanding of a problem with the suffering of another and acting to solve the problem or alleviate the suffering. Again, the benefits of compassion and action are numerous and have been studied. They again change the brain. This is not rocket science, but it is science. The studies behind social emotional learning and the studies behind the, the, the components of the choose love formula, uh, I would want my child to be exposed, period. I can't imagine one wouldn't. When Jesse died, we saw what he left on the chicken, on the kitchen chalkboard, but he also left a note to his older brother, 11 years old at the time. He unfolded this note two or three weeks later because he just happened to find it folded up on his desk. It said, have a lot of fun. So one of the ideas of the Choose Love curriculum is to have a lot of fun, which is good. Most of the teachers that get engaged in teaching this program grow substantially from the program. You can go to our website and get all kinds of information. You can download the program from our website. You can sign up for our newsletters, which I wish you would, or follow us in any other ways that the world follows people nowadays. And thank you guys for listening. This is a little bit longer presentation than I made to the safety committee because they were, in fact, in a hurry. So I've extended this uh, So hopefully... You benefit from it. I'll be happy to ask, answer questions for you. But most of this stuff is simply common sense. It's simply teaching kids what we want them to learn. Thank you. I wonder, wonder who, who, who wrote the book of life. Today we're going to talk about choose love and we're going to talk about the last component. But first I want to review all the other components. Before I started learning choose love, I didn't really pay attention to those feelings. I want you to think about either how that character showed compassion what does it mean to have courage? I think um, that courage has changed for me because instead of the knight in shining armor, I think that courage is more about helping other people, not just for yourself. Now that I know how to be courageous, I go up and speak in front of my class with no like issues because I used to have a lot of trouble speaking up. Choose Love has definitely made it easier to go to school. At the beginning of the year, the anxiety level was definitely, for me, at a 10. After Choose Love, I feel like for me, the anxiety level was like a lot lower and probably more like at a 3. Raise your hand if Choose Love is your favorite subject. Whose grades got better because Choose Love 
I do use Choose Love at home because I feel like the hardest thing to do is to be like civil with your like sibling. And the message that my daughter gave to me about um, compassion, forgiveness, love, and how people belong just made me a better police officer, a better parent. Ever since I lose, learned to use love, like sometimes have fights at home, and then we just forgive each other and just move on. From bullying to drug abuse to suicide, I mean all of these ter truly terrifying uh, problems that we are anticipating as yes. parents, all of that I believe could be just proactively mellowed out, disappeared, calm down, <laughs> calm Go down away. as a result out the door. of the, yeah, yeah. I think it definitely helps me feel safer in school. Show me the forgiveness tree. Like leaves on your son don't have uh, words on it. Can you point to your forgiving fingers? There's a heart in the middle. Uh, yeah. And here's our forgiving fingers. I truly believe in my heart and as a police officer, okay, if these other schools um, and the other students open their hearts and mind to what Scar the message Scarlet sent in. One, two, three, four, five. Until my anger dies. Until my anger dies. If that person had a program that's, that Scarlet is set up for these kids right now, that day never would happen. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I'm still mad, I'll count again. again. I feel safer because I don't think these people that I've learned to love with would ever do something like that. Doing all these great things like gratitude, it's it's mind blowing. Need to be taught and can be learned even by the elderly. Yes. <laughs> I think I'll remember it forever. Choose Love is really amazing.